Yeah, we're, we, we have uh, Facebook Live, so we're going two different ways. So let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you for your guidance and your strength, for your mercy, which is new every day. Father God, I ask for the strength to do your will, that you would guide us and direct us. I pray for this class tonight, that we would do things that are honoring and pleasing in your sight. May we study your word, and our study would not just be for our knowledge but for us to be transformed that you would fill us with the knowledge of your son renew us in that in that knowledge father god and help us to do your will we love you and we want to give you all the glory and we want to worship you now in this time it's in jesus name our lord and savior pray all these things by faith amen amen okay so uh the the downside tonight is we don't have a powerpoint because i was trying to get all this other stuff ready but the upside is we are uh, moving Hello. forward to really help to really help all the uh, all of the students because some there's there's not a good internet connection. So we are not only in the Zoom class, but now we're also on Facebook Live to the to, to my right. And so the the benefit there is if you don't have a really good stable connection, you can watch on Facebook. Uh, you can go back and watch it again. So you're really going to get all the content. So. Uh, we're going to be doing that moving forward. And then if, if you can't attend right away and you need to watch it the next day, uh, you can just go in and, and log in. So I'm really excited about that. We still are going to be doing the uh, posting on YouTube, the edited copies of the, of the sessions. But now I won't be so pressured to, to really set it up right away for you guys. And um, yeah, so this is, let's see how this goes, but I'm really excited to be able to, to be, have this new platform. It, I think it alleviates all the stress all around. So um, anyway, tonight is a workshop, and so we're really continuing what we talked about last week. I'm just going to be working in Step Bible with you this whole time. We'll be doing examples. We'll be looking through different texts and just really becoming familiar with this, and then you can watch this later, and also you can... Um, uh, you can also uh, uh, watch the videos on Step Bible. So Step Bible is very powerful, and we really just want to be really just, this is going to be our, our place that we do word studies, that we, we go deep in the word, okay? So uh, if you want, if, if, if uh, you, can, you can watch on your, your, your tablet or your phone, and then you can practice on your computer, or you can just watch me. It's up to you. Some people want to want to. If if you have a tablet, you're watching on the tablet, and then you can practice on your computer. So anyway, uh, just I'll just I'll just start over here. So in finding Step Bible, uh, I'm not going to go through the 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 cloud resource tool. There's a link there that you can click on, but it's just with all the syncing, it's just too much. It's just too much. So. Uh, the easiest way to access if you don't have the cloud research tool is just to go to google.com and then you're just going to type in step bible so step bible and i'm just going to click on step bible right here and so here we have step bible um so i'm just going to go ahead and click in the step bible and here you go uh this is their this is their their their, their beginning web browser and so what i'll do is i'm just going to go ahead and this gives you some recommendations. And so you can look at those recommendations on your own time. I'm just going, if you look over here, you can see there's an X. So I'm just going to X out this window. So now we have this, this is your main window. We have ESV, if you can see on the left. Uh, and then Genesis 1 is where we're set up to. So the first thing I'm going to do is, if you have really good eyes, then this is maybe a good, this is maybe a good, font size. But for, for those of you if, you, if you need a larger font size, when you're going to go over here, you, do you see this over to your right? There's this like gear. So the gear gives you settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, on that gear. And then you have several different options. You can, you can include headings. You can have uh, verse numbers. Uh, you can change it into separate lines. You can, you can toggle Jesus words into to red. There's a lot of different options here, but what I'm going to do down at the bottom is this font size. So I'm going to go ahead and blow this up so that everyone can really see the text. Let me just take a quick peek to make sure it's large enough in the, in the 
the camera. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here. Let me just make, I'm just gonna keep making this bigger. So I hope for those of you who are on Facebook Live, send me a message if that's not big enough for you. Let me just pull up my, send me a message on the group if, if, it's, if you need to see that larger. I hope that you can already see that size, okay? All right, so that's the first thing we wanna do, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, to, to talk around some things some, some before we, we, we start practicing. So if you recall before I talked about the importance for doing your context study of having the, the titles here. So if you look back in this toggle, the, the headings is actually checked. Everyone can see that. So this is really important because this will help familiarize yourself with the context, what's actually going on in the text. So, so I, I do think that we should always have this heading uh, toggled on. You, if, if you're just doing some other, uh, if you're doing something else, you can toggle it off. But when you're doing your context study, it, it really should be on. The, the next thing we see over here to, to the left is uh, these, are, these are references where there's either a direct citation, allusion, or parallel passage, uh, or parallel passage that is connected to this to this passage in some way. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go back to our to our our verse in Romans and just kind of work through it again, just so that we can be familiar. So I'm going to go back to one sixteen to seventeen. You can see I'm typing it in here. Then I'm going to click on Romans one sixteen to seventeen. Okay. So now we have all these things highlighted. So specifically, let's just focus on those texts to the left. So the texts to the right, the texts to the right are actually, these are related in some way, okay? So looking, looking here, this A, do you see that A uh, superscript, the A superscript? In, in your physical print Bibles, that will, that will be the same if you have an ESV, NIV, and that's just giving you parallel passages, okay? And so you can just look across, there's parallel passages, okay? So it's really easy. You don't have to go searching. This actually will save you a ton of time versus looking up each one. So what I can do is I'm going to click on this A. And then over here, we can go ahead and click. So I'm just going to click one time. And then it gives you a, a click, a, a quick look at that passage. So then I can actually blow that passage up. So if you look, I clicked on this. This arrow, you can see that arrow, arrow. it's actually gonna, gonna pop up that passage of scripture so that you can look at the context of that parallel reference. Okay, so right now we're not gonna go into to the details of the parallel reference, but I want you to see how easy this is. So checking parallel references uh, is, is really very, this is very easy, it's very accessible. Okay, so then I'm just gonna X out of here and then going over to the right, I can X out of that second, so I'm, I'm going right back to the original. So really just a quick check, it's very nice, okay? Um, so then you just always wanna make sure that if, if you're, 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 you're scrolling over those superscripts, okay? There's a lot of superscripts here. Let me just take a pause. Is that making sense? Is there any questions? Do you wanna add anything? Is that making sense? If someone's trying, if someone's trying to do it and you're having an issue, uh, please let me know. I'll just take a moment here. Okay, I think I think we're I think we're we're, we're getting to it. Okay, the the next thing that I want us to see here is is that looking at the text itself. Okay, looking at the text itself, you can just hover. I'm just hovering over each. I'm hovering over each word that's highlighted in 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 the blue in the, in, or maybe it's a blue green, bluish green. And then you're getting quick, you're getting quick information below. Does everyone see that? So when I hover over gospel, it's giving me the information. It's giving me the, the if you can look below, you have gospel, you have gospel below, and then you actually have euangelion, which is the transliteration of the, the Greek, and then the actual Greek word. Then you have some definitions, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and click on gospel, okay? And then when I click on gospel, 
it actually goes ahead and it gives me information on the right. Okay, information on the right. All right. Now, what's actually really nice, let me do a, a bigger one here. I'm going to do righteousness. Okay. So if you look down here, you're going to have, you're going to have the meeting here. You're going to have the meeting with, with various uh, uh, definitions. That, that's the range of meeting. And then you're also going to have examples. So these are example texts that you can look up to see the parallel context. Okay. And then they have the LSJ dictionary. I actually, I was also watching the videos for Step Bible. This is actually the Liddell and Scott Greek lexicon. And I was actually thinking about how I could get everyone's hands on this before when I was teaching back in Das Marinius. So this is actually a, a top level, the top level Greek lexicon. I went online to Amazon and it's like 200 US dollars on Amazon, but you have access to all that power uh, here without purchasing. So uh, in, in this situation, this is not a situation where the free is like subpar. This is, this is a top scholarship lexicon. I don't even have it yet in my paid. I just have a, a smaller abridged version on my paid version for my paid software. And I was looking at buying it and it was 200 bucks. So expensive. I think the Amazon was 129 US dollars. That's like 7,000 pesos. And then the, the one for my software was 200. So it's not, this is an excellent resource at your fingertips. The next thing that we see down here is so you have, you have the, a general definition, you have the meaning, and then you actually have the lexicon with, with uh, meaning as well. And then you also, have, you also have related words. So this is excellent because this is giving you related words that is go, uh, related words that when you do your word search, you might wanna include some of these related words in your word search. We're gonna try that a little bit later, okay? So you can see some very familiar words. Let me just, um, I'm gonna minimize myself for a second. Um, so you can see here, there's some really nice related words that I might, we might be interested in our search. Justification, dikaios, dikaioses, uh, righteous act, uh, to justify dikaio or dikaio, um, dikaios, just. So uh, there's a lot of related words to this dikaiosune. Uh, so very helpful, not that you're trying to, to look at the Greek, but that you're trying, not that you're trying to look at the Greek as value in itself, but that you're trying to um, look at related words. The key is looking at related words, especially for parallel context. And you're going to see in the word searches why those related words will really help us. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so th these are the two, these are the two uh, main screen, actually three. So you have the, the cross references, the text itself, and then on the right will always be this, will always be this, uh, um, the lexicon definition. If, if we come, if we click on this, this is actually an analysis. So you can actually also, look at word, when, when we do word searches, we'll, we'll be able to save, see more details here. Uh, let, let me go back now and just take one more peek at this. Uh, okay, all right, great. Any questions or comments before we start practicing? Any, any comments or questions before we start practicing? Team? Yes, go ahead. The analysis, where did you click that analysis, Bible text sort by frequency and it may come out? Okay. Where did you yeah, so let's just, if you, if you come back up here, maybe it's a little bit small. You have this eye, you have like a graph. This is actually a bookmark. And then this is a, a quick link. So if I click on the eye, it brings you back. If you're looking at the cursor, it brings you back to the vocab, the meaning, and the dictionary. And then if you come up to the top and just move over, there's the analysis there. So, um, and you can see, these are actually the most common words used in this chapter. Okay. So later you can actually animate and see how it'll go through like the primary, the primary topic. 
It's very powerful. There's actually an example of it on YouTube. It's really powerful. And then we have bookmarks here. If this, I'm having issues with it saving my searches, so I don't know if it's my issue or my, my web browser, but it, this is a bookmark, so as you do searches, it should save those searches. Now, is everyone familiar with Google Chrome or, or Safari? Where uh, I think also Windows Explorer, is everyone familiar with opening up these different tabs? Is anyone not familiar with this? I don't want to rush. Does, does anyone need to know how to open these different tabs or does everyone use multiple tabs? I'll just take a moment here. Everyone knows how to open these tabs, correct? No problem. No problem, okay. Does anyone, I, I just don't want to leave anyone behind. Okay. So what I would recommend doing, and you can, you can do word searches. I would just keep my word searches uh, separate. So meaning, meaning to say that each word search I'm doing, I would just keep a separate tab. You know, you can, you can leave it where you're looking at the, the bookmark as well. But for me, it's just easier, okay? All right, let's go back here. All right, so let's, 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 uh, Let's take a step back first and let, let's just go to the notes and let me just review some of the things from our notes and then we'll, we'll start doing word searches together, okay? Okay, so I did not post anything from last week. This, this, these are things that we've already discussed. I'm gonna go over it again and then I will post something, uh, some type of procedure after tonight's class. I posted the, I posted the observations and questions which will be, which will be due next Tuesday. And then the word study assignment will be due will be due the following week, and we'll just continue from there on. The other thing is that starting October, I will start counting, not a lot, but a little bit for late for late assignments. Okay, and again, that's just because we have to maintain a standard. If, if someone's turning in the assignments on time, uh, there, you know and someone's late, I understand there might be extenuating. If, if there's an extenuating circumstance where you had to turn it in several days, just email me your reason. But if, if it's just because your schedule is busy and it's late, we all understand, but uh, there will be some points that you would lose just because we have to be fair. It, ha it has to be just, <laughs> you know. So, um, so beginning October, I'll start taking off some, not a lot, but some points if you turn your assignment in late, okay? Um, all right, so word, word studies, okay? Uh, let's just quickly review this and then we'll go back into, into practicing it in Step Bible. And so in word studies, it's, it's the job of the interpreter or the exegete, that's you or I as we're studying, to uh, label all key words and phrases that need to be defined in the context, okay? So uh, this, is, this is our job, okay? So the first step number one is to label those words, those key words, those fundamental words or phrases, so we're including phrases, that need to be examined for not only your preparation, but maybe they need to be defined, okay? After you've identified those, those words that you need to study, you're going to, to, to look at word uh, possibilities. Now, I have removed the other steps uh, defining what type of problem you're solving, right? We talked before, that was the advanced, that's uh, a word meaning, a word reference, and then also a, uh, 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 a content, okay? I am not requiring that, all right? What I'll do is I will, I will have maybe two different procedures. If you wanna go deep, and if you wanna, if you wanna identify what type of analysis you need to do and work through that, Maybe I can give some extra credit, okay? But I'm not expecting that's going that's going beyond the call of duty, okay? So right now we're just assuming all you're going to do is you're going to look at word uh, the word that you need to investigate and then word possibilities. So those are different. Those are different. Um, uh, those are those are different problems. So yeah. So here you don't have to do this. So I'm just going to. Uh, I'm going to mark that in red, okay? That is not required, okay? I'm just, let, let me, that, that doesn't look too nice. Let me do something here. Let's just, let's just uh, make a modification here. This is optional line, okay? That's optional. It's not required. That's a nicer, it's a nicer, less aggressive color, okay? 
So you don't have to do this. We're just going to assume that you're going to identify uh, each word, um, just the meaning line. So you're just doing word meaning, okay? So um, in this, so the first step is identify the word. The second step, step is you're going to identify the range of meaning. So range of meaning, let me just highlight this. Range of meaning is here, okay? And then, so each word is going to have at least two or three different meanings and you're gonna pick one or the other, okay? If, if all the meanings are pretty much the same, and we'll see this, salvation pretty much has the same type of meaning, then, then you don't need to really investigate that, okay? Now maybe, maybe, there's, maybe there's, there is, there's a, a need for a different word and that's when two legitimately different meanings, not the same synonymous meanings. Is everyone tracking with me there? It's not too different, it's, it's uh, I mean, sorry, it's not too synonymous, it's two different meanings, at least. Two, it should, be, it should be two or three. It should not be more than three, okay? Because a word that might have five or six meanings, some of them will be impossible. So I want only two to three legitimate meanings that are plaus plausible, that are, that are possible in your context, okay? Um, then you're going to look up the word that you have identified in your dictionary or lexicon. And so this, this is going to be in step Bible. And then this is what I'm talking about. It has to fit logically and um, uh, it cannot be illogical or contradictory. Okay, select all those meanings that fit logically in the verse's context. If it is illogical or contradictory, do not use it. If it's illogical or doesn't make sense, just automatically discard it. There's no there's no need to, to, to figure it out, okay? So then here is the comment where I'm saying it should just be uh, at the most four, but I'm really looking for two or for three, okay? Two or three, all right? Once you've identified those two or three meanings, okay, then you're going to have a word choice. You're going to select the option that best fits, okay? And then the two ways, that the, uh, you're gonna select the option that best fits, and then you're going to give me three reasons why you've made that selection, okay? So number one, you're going to, to choose all the words you wanna investigate. I'm, I'm gonna be looking for at least four from your passage. Then you're going, so you're gonna look at, you're gonna identify those words. Then you're going to identify the word possibilities for each one of those words. Then you're going to, to select the one that you think fits best in the context. And then the last reason is you're just going to give me three reasons why you've selected that, okay? And the reasons are right here. The possibilities are either a context validation or words, um, or a, a, a word study, meaning to say that you're, you're word searching and you're looking at how, at, you're looking here at, this is usage here, uh, word usage, okay? So maybe, uh, for example, this is used uh, five times in Romans with the same meaning. Okay, so that would be an example. So that's a word usage, I mean, word study. So you're looking at you're 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 looking at the different uses and you're just adding it up. Okay, a, a context. Validation is different. Context validation would be uh, where the, the context, something specific, an idea in the context is supporting that. Okay, so for example, we did the example of salvation. And so it says the wrath of God is coming, and so then we are saved by, by faith in Romans, in Romans 5. So that would be a context argument, defining salvation as uh, being rescued from the wrath of God, something, something like that. Okay. Let me just pause. Is, is, that, is that making sense? Is, is that making sense for, for... And we try one word to study. Before. Yeah, so we're, the, rest, the rest of tonight, we're going to be practicing this. So, oh, okay. so we'll be working through this together. We'll be working through this together so that it's really clear. It's not confusing yet. Yeah. Great, great. I'm just reviewing what we're doing so that before we go into it, so that you're really understanding the direction that we're going here, okay? All right, and then, and then, um, uh, yeah, so then, let me sit down here. 
Yeah, so this, just really quick before we, we move on, with the context, we had this image before. So, so looking, if you can imagine, the word is the word itself. And then look, this is the levels of, of, of strength of the argument. So if you find, if you found the same word being used in the same way in the immediate context, that's much stronger than finding the same word being used in the canonical context. So we're going from hot being the strongest to, to blue being the weakest or the coldest, okay? So you'd go from the word itself to the immediate context, to the context of the book, to the context of the author's works, to other, other writers with similar genre or similar topic, to writings in a similar period, and then also the kind of canonical context. And, we, and we, we, we discussed this last week, so this is all part of last week. This is just review, okay? All right, uh, um, and that's the strength. So, so, so if your proofs are coming from a canonical context, that's a, that's a very, that can be a weak proof. And so my question would be, why are you not using some type of proof that's stronger? Okay, so you wanna be looking, when you start doing your word study, you wanna look at the immediate context first, you know, then the context of the book, then the context of the author, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's go back to step Bible and let's just, we're just gonna practice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to create a new document and we'll just slowly start to work through here. So um, we're actually going to use the same words that we used last week. I want to do it over again. I want to... Someone has a question. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, so we're going to use the same words from last time. If you want to search another word, we can do that as well. I want to, number one, repeat what we did and then also go a little bit deeper in, in, in searching those words. I want to show you how you would search those words in Romans, in the New Testament, and then also the Old Testament, okay? So we're, we're, going, to be, we're going to be really expanding. We're going to be really expanding our practice here, okay? So I'm just going to type in word study. So this is our, this is our document, okay? And then the four words that we were going to be investigating were, they were gospel, salvation. So these were the four words that we were going to investigate, okay? So let's go back. So thinking about here, we just did step one. We identified the words that we want to investigate, okay? We identified the words that we want to investigate, okay? So we're going to go back and, and we're, we're going to really just, you know, now I also discussed how sometimes these words could be deficient. Uh, Meaning, meaning to say that the word meaning is deficient because there's a broader context, but we're just going to really look and just really, really analyze these words and look at it deep in the context, even though my comments from last week were just doing a word meaning study is, is not so good. It's not, it's not as good. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and let's look at the word gospel. So what I want to first do is... I want to establish the range of meaning, okay? So we're looking, this would be, this would be the word possibilities, okay? Everyone tracking with me there? Word possibilities. So we're looking up the range of meaning. Now, it's, if it's, we already determined last week that it was pretty much, uh, there was only one meaning, but still we're going to do it just for the sake of doing it, okay? So gospel. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm hovering over gospel and it's saying it's uh, the gospel or the good news. So I'm just going to click here on the word itself. So this is how you would, if you were doing this, this is how you should be doing this. So I'm going to click one time. All right. So we have gospel on the right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to search this word gospel. Okay. I'm going to search this word gospel because, uh, the range of meaning here, if we, if we look over here, it's glad tidings, good news, or joyful news. So just before we search really quick, there's really only one legitimate meaning, good news, or we could say gospel, okay? We're going to further define, we'll just leave it good news, okay? So um, Fair enough. Now this is extra. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, um, 
do our word searches here, okay? This is an extra step that you don't have to do, but just for my, for my own purpose, okay? May I just interrupt a little bit, Tim? Go ahead, yeah. Uh, on the right side, if you, if others are following on the right side, we have different heading, vocal, vocab, meaning, and dictionary. Yeah. When you look at the other possibilities, where do you concentrate? In the vocab or in the meaning? So, so, I mean, the most precise would be under LSJ dictionary, okay? LSJ dictionary, you're looking at the, at the range of meaning here, okay? This is, I, I, ju I just went here and looked at the range of meaning here. Good tidings, good joyful news, glad tidings, okay? Um, th the vocab is more for, yeah, I would look primarily at meaning or L LSJ dictionary. Great question though. But if you notice here, it's pretty much the same, right? Um, in, this is because the word is pretty much straightforward. It only has one meaning, okay? Or a very it has a very narrow range of meaning. If you have a word with a big range of meaning, then you're going to want to go down here to the LSJ dictionary, okay? All right? But if you recall, Kuya Bullboy, we already determined that this is not really the problem that we're looking at. We, um, we, we were looking at what the full content of the gospel was when we, when we discussed last week, okay? Um, but right now we're just practicing word searches. So that's why we're, 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 we're doing it like this, okay? But later on, you would wanna go down to LSJ dictionary, at least meaning if not LSJ dictionary, okay? All right, so this is how I would, this is how I would, this is how I would carry out a word search if this word was debate, okay? Or, or if I just really wanna get a deeper meaning of the word, you can do this as well. So if it's not controversial, you can still, or it's not debated, you can still do it. So what I, what I, what I first do is I look at this word here. I'm going to look for the transliterated word. The transliterated word is euangelion, euangelion, or E-U-A-N-G-E-L-I-O-N. There's a dash, and then you have the Greek word. So that's the word you want to search. So I'm going to type in here that... That word. Can everyone see it's coming up here? Everyone can see at the top there's a drop down. Yuangelion, Yuangelizomai, Yuangelistes, Yuangelia. So you have a whole bunch of different options here. Okay, so I'm going to click on Yuangelion. Okay. So then when I search it here, it only comes up one time. And the reason why it only comes up one time is because I need to change. This here is, is limiting my range, my word search range. Is everyone seeing that? It's being limited by Romans 1, 16 to 17. So I'm going to change this. I'm just going to click on that drop down arrow and I'm going to change it to Romans. So, so then I'm searching all of Romans, okay? Did everyone see that? Everyone's tracking with me. So you're going to want to click, there's a little drop down arrow triangle and you're going to want to change it. Okay. So now I'm looking at all of Romans. Okay. So then here I see nine results. Everyone sees that nine, nine, nine results. Those results, Romans 1, 1, Paul is set apart for the gospel of God. Romans 1, 9, he serves with the spirit in the gospel of the son without ceasing making mention. Romans 1, 16 is our passage. 216 my gospel 1016 is the next reference so you have 216 referencing my gospel and then 1016 is this idea of obey the gospel we talked about that last time 1128 as regards to the gospel they are enemies for your sake and then 15 and so there's not a lot of usages there's there's five there's nine results so let's just i'm going to come back here just so that we're tracking so we searched This is a noun if you look at there, and we, it came up nine times in Romans, okay? So Yuang Elion came up nine, nine times in Romans, okay? And we looked at those contexts, okay? Coming back here now, I want to see, okay, there has to be more words of gospel in, 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 in Romans. It's the, it's the center of only nine times. 
So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, does everyone see this toggle up here, related words? Does everyone see that related words? There's a plus and then related words. Everyone can see that? I'm going to click on that. So when I click on that, several other words come down that are related. Look at the related words. Euangelistis or evangelist, if you're going to say it in English, evangelist. So that's a related word. So euangelion or gospel is, is, a, is a noun, and it's, it's focused on the content of this message, right? Well, an evangelist is someone who's proclaiming the gospel. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to add that. I'm going to, I'm going to check on that to, because I want to include that in my search, okay? Then I see down here to speak good news. Pro euangelizomai. That looks like a verb. That looks like a verb. So I'm going to click on that as well. So I click on that. And I get even, and, and then also to speak good news. Euangelizomai. So I'm going to click on all of these. So now my word search is all of words that are related to the gospel. Does everyone see that? So now my, my search went up to 12. So from 9 to 12. Does everyone see that? So then looking down here, verse 15 popped in. I am eager to preach the gospel. So look at this. Look at this. Does everyone see this here? Look at that definition, to speak good news. So here, it's literally this, this verbal action of proclaiming good news. Does everyone see that? So that's a verb. I am eager to preach the gospel. Okay, so it's just this verbal action of proclamation. All right? And then coming down here, there's, uh, uh, where is the other several references? Okay, verse 1520, to preach the gospel. Again, that's a verbal idea. There's a verbal idea there. And then also, there should be one more. Okay, so... There's this, so there so we've added this this the, there's another verbal idea. The, blessed are how beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news. Okay, so now there's 12 references to help us define. Okay. So looking at this Yuangelian and related words, which includes nouns and verbs we have 12 times in Romans, okay? Everyone tracking with me? Is it making sense? I hope I'm not losing anyone here. Okay, good. All right, it's gonna get crazy, so just, so just bear with me, okay? It's gonna get good. It's gonna get, I, I promise you it's gonna get good. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is, I am just going to look at this word in the, in the, uh, I'm going to X out Romans, and I'm just going to look at it in the New Testament. Okay, so now if you see here, I remove Romans, and now it's going to give me all of those usages in the New Testament. Okay? All right? And if you notice here, there's also, I'm going to include these verbs. So what I'm trying to get at is the noun and the verbs are very closely related, so I'm going to search both. Okay? So then when I come down here, Look at the New Testament usage here. In the New Testament, 121 results. 121 results. Now, let me take a step back. Um, yeah, I want to take a step back. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, let's look through here, and then we'll, and then we'll, then we'll specify it down a bit, okay? Um, so you have, you have the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, the God, good news is preached, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there's, this is very helpful in getting a further definition of, of gospel. There's a lot of this, the good news is almost, almost always related to this kingdom of God. This, everyone sees the connection there. It's really powerful, okay? Acts, the good news of the kingdom of God. The gospel, preaching the gospel. So there's 121 results of this. Okay, we, we went through Romans. There's Corinthians. So then let's do something else here. All right, so word search here. This is euangelion.
and related words, nouns, and verbs. And this is 121 times in New Testament. All right. So there's a lot of references we can look at, okay? Now, what we can also do is we can limit this to, if we want to look at Paul's, now I haven't found out a quicker way to do this, so this might take some time, but we're going to look at So this would be a step that I forgot to do. So if you're looking, can anyone tell me what they think I'm doing? What am I doing right now? If you're looking at the word in the different New Testament book. But, but which specific ones? Tell me which specific ones, Bo Boy. Which specific ones? that one you're clicking titles yeah but what i'm trying to get at is i'm looking at the usage just in pauline literature in, in just paul's letters do you see that romans first and second corinthians galatians ephesians colossians philippians uh philemon i missed philemon i think that's everyone one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen did I miss any? <laughs> Maybe I did. Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians. So then I'm going to search. So then if you look here, there's 57 results in Paul's, in Paul's letters, okay? So coming back here, if you notice what I... If you notice what I did, I, I went to the immediate context, the context of the book. Then I went to the author's works. The next range could have been all the, the regular epistles, if I, if I chose all the, all the epistles, and then you could do the New Testament, okay? So just coming back here. Hang on one second. Sorry, my printer decided to start running <laughs> during the class. So everyone sees what I'm doing here? So these are different types of word searches that you can do to try to, to, try to understand how your word is being used, okay? Again, Evangelion gospel is very clear. We don't really have to define it like this, but your words might not be. So this is, this is what I'm trying to do to help you. Okay, next. What can we do next? Now let's, let's start over a new pain. Oh, great. Okay. I didn't, I didn't want to delete that. Okay. All right. The next thing we can do is, so we did, we did that in, in, uh, we did that in the New Testament. Now we can search this word in the Old Testament. We can search this word in the Old Testament. So what we're going to do now is we're going to X this out. We're going to, we're going to, to change this. You're going to want to write this down. So I'm looking at the Septuagint. So I'm clicking on Septuagint. So now I'm looking at the Greek in the Old Testament. You're going to see why in a second. So you would want to, if you want to look up a, a Greek word in the Old Testament, you click Septuagint. And then I'm going to add one more in here. I'm going to add, I'm going to add 
this apostolic Bible polyglot, uh, polyglot English text adapted by Tyndale's house. This gives an English translation of the, the Greek because you don't know Greek, but it's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. Um, so I'm going to click that as well. So we have two now. We have the LXX and then we also have this translation. Okay, now I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in this word. So look what we have now. Uh, let's see. Looks like there's 78, 78 usages. All right, so what I'm going to do now is it's saying 78 results, but it's only giving me. Let me add the related words here. Okay, so I added related words. So we're looking at the word gospel and the related verb words, okay? Just coming through here, um, you have, you have, uh, let me, okay, so then, so before we, before we go to the, pa the passages that are of significance, th this is running parallel, okay? You see the Greek text, you see the English text, okay? If you come back up here to this, to this toggle switch, Okay, you can change it from interleaved to interlinear. So you can really see the Greek and English side by side. So when I click interlinear, look how nice you can really see the English. You can see the English with the Greek right next to it. Okay, everyone sees that. So this is a really nice, you're seeing the Greek and the English side by side. All right. But I'm going to go back to the interleave because for readability, it's easier like this, where, where you can just see them parallel. So if you're looking really precisely, you can do the interlinear, but this inter, interleaved is easier to read. That's why it's not literally lining it up. It's maintaining its, the original word structure in English and also Greek. So I'm just going to look through here. This is good news in, in Second Samuel, but it's, it's in its original context. It's not really significant to us. So I'm just coming down here. When I come down to the Psalms is where I really start to see some, some uh, uh, amazing uh, things. Okay, so let me just, I'm going to minimize my screen again. So looking here, Psalms, Psalm 60, uh, Psalms 49, we looked at this before. This is actually a reference. I announced good news. I announce good news of righteousness in the assembly. Behold, my lips in no way should restrain. Lord, you know. So you have this proclamation of good news and it's righteousness. And look here. Uh, I, pronounce, I, pro, I announce good news in righteousness. And then typically our Bibles will say congregation. But look at the word. Look at the word up here. It's ecclesia. <laughs> assembly or church. Does everyone see that? So th this is almost a parallel reference. This, this, this places the Old Testament and much closer and an analogous to our situation than we would think. So I will proclaim righteousness in the church, in the great church. Okay. Everyone sees that? Uh, down here, Psalm 68, 11. The Lord, the, the Lord God shall give discourse to the ones announcing good news. So again, it's this proclamation of good news. I will announce, uh, sing to the Lord, Psalm 90, 96, 2, sing to the Lord, bless his name, announce good news day by day of his deliverance. And look at this, deliverance is, look, look below, it's, it's salvation. Does everyone see that? It's uh, announce the good news of salvation, okay? So you have several references to this. We see actually a very close connection with gospel and righteousness, gospel and salvation, okay? Then, then we come down here. The next references to this good news begin in Isaiah. Isaiah 40. And there's a lot of references in Isaiah 40. So 40 verse 9, you have two references here. 
Up upon the mountain, the high ascend, O one announcing good news of Zion. Raise up strength of your voice, O one announcing good news of Jerusalem. Raise it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Isaiah 52, 7. Uh, as the hour upon the mountains, as feet announcing good news, the hearing of peace, as of announcing good news, good things, audibly I will produce your deliverance. And that's salvation. I will declare, uh, I will produce, was this what word produce? Yeah, I will make, I will give you salvation, saying, Zion, your God reigns, your God shall reign. Okay? And then what is, what is, for those of you who are familiar, what is Isaiah 53? What is significant? So that's Isaiah 52, 7. What's in Isaiah 53? For those of you who, what's in Isaiah 53? What's the famous passage, passage in Isaiah 53? Well, Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53 is the, the suffering servant. It's the description of, of, of the servant who gives his life to atone for the sins. He's the lamb that's led to the slaughter. So let's, let's, let's click on Isaiah 53. So I'm going to click on Isaiah 53 or 52, and then it gives me the context. It gives me the context, all right? So I'm going to go on now to, uh, I'm going to, I'm clicked here. I'm going to, just one second here, how can I get there? So I'm going to add Isaiah 53 here. So see how it combines? It combines 52. So 52 is here. It's talking about this proclamation of good news. And then this goes right into Isaiah 53, which is uh, the declaration of the arm of the Lord. Uh, looking down here, there was no appearance to give him glory or honor. We beheld him, and he did not have the appearance of beauty. His appearance was without honor. And then, it, now we should be using, we should be using the, the Hebrew. But this is going, he was wounded for our sins. He was, uh, he was made sick on account of our lawless deeds. The discipline of our peace was upon him. By his strife, we are healed. So this is describing, this is describing the salvation that's given to us through the cross. Does everyone see that? So when looking for this word, this gospel word, we actually, the broader context of Isaiah 52 includes the suffering servant. And the, this, this is the gospel in the Old Testament. Paul said that the gospel was proclaimed in the Old Testament. This is a perfect example of the gospel in the Old Testament. So you might want to, if you're preaching, you might want to include or consider this. This is a, this is part of our word search. This is this is most definitely what Paul had on his mind when he when he said, "I am, I am not ashamed. Of, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to the Jew, to everyone who is believing, to the Jew first and also the Greek." Okay, coming down here further, you have Isaiah fifty-two seven, Isaiah sixty-six, Isaiah sixty-one. So really, you have one, two. Three, four, five, six, six references of this proclamation of good news in Isaiah in Isaiah 40 to 66. So what I want to say here is that this is also, a, a, if you're thinking about the Old Testament and pro proclaiming the gospel, this is describing the salvation of the Lord we're going to see next, next hour. But really what I also want us to see is that this gospel is really present in Isaiah we would not have been able to see that without a word search. We would not have been able to see that without a word search. So that's the benefit of this word search. Now, we're going to take a break here. I want to emphasize, we, we believe that the Hebrew Bible is the inspired word of God, okay? The, the Septuagint is, a, is an accurate, though flawed, translation. But the reality is in the first century that both Jesus and, and Paul— well, especially Paul, uh, Jesus and the New Testament writers, more than Paul, the Jesus and the New Testament writers quoted from the Septuagint. And actually, there's a strong case to be made that Jesus quoted from the Targums, the Aramaic translations, okay? This is not to say that those are, 
those are inspired, it is to say that they use the texts that the people knew. Okay, and so God used those texts. And since they used and quoted those texts, they're also a benefit to us. Again, our inspiration is, is from the Hebrew. Okay, I'm not, I'm not bringing that into question. Okay, and, but, but we would not see these connections without a word search. So then let's, let's go back up here to our... Um, Now, we're going to take a break, but I want to come back here. I just want to show you, okay? So then let's, let's go back up to, let's just, let's just come back here. I'm going to go back to Romans 1. Let's go back to Romans 1. I want to show you what I'm referring to here. Romans 1. So coming back to Romans 1, and I'm just going to blow this up here. This is what I'm referring to, okay? Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So this is setting the context for Romans. And so we found a cluster of gospel references in Isaiah 40 to 66. And so very strongly, we should consider other contexts in Romans. We should consider other contexts of gospel statements in uh, Pauline uh, literature, but also in, 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 in the prophets and especially Isaiah 40 to 66. Now we're going deep here and maybe not every sermon you can do this, fair enough. But in studying these ideas, really you either read your Bible from cover to cover to try to find it, which will take you so long, or you do some wise word searches, okay? And we see this. All right, let's go ahead and let's take a break. Let's take a 10-minute break. And uh, if you want to ask, I'm going to just pause this share. If, if you want to discuss, ask questions, let's do it. 10-minute um, break to use the bathroom. I do need to get some water. But let's, yeah, let's take a break. And then if um, you want to ask questions on the break, that, that's fine. Let me, let me just get some water. So I hope everyone could see. So we did, we did, there's a lot of different word searches here. And so just to review, that what you want to do when you do these word searches is you want to be using the ES for, for New Testament. You want to use the ESV, the ESV, and then uh, just search the, the Greek word the Greek transliterated word. Okay. Now we're going to be doing, I'm actually going to do, I'll actually do uh, salvation next and then we'll do belief third. We'll do salvation next. Okay, so coming back here. I'm, go, I'm in Romans 1. I'll just, I'll just, I'll go ahead and make the modification again. Romans 1, so I'm typing it in. 16 to 17. The option comes up here. Just a quick, just a quick mention too. This, this is parallel. So did you notice in our word search that, that this was actually, we found this on our word search. So this is actually the exact same. Everyone can see that here. So our word search actually confirmed this cross-reference, okay? So that, that's a helpful double check that you're really in the right context looking at this, okay? Okay, now, so let's go ahead and look at this word salvation. So I'm going to look at, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hover on this, and then I'm going to look at it. So salvation, you can hover it. If I come over here to the, to the right, Okay, so I zoom this up a little bit. So looking here on the right, what is salvation? It's saving, preservation, rescue, deliverance. So actually, Kuya Bullboy, I think also the vocab, it's telling you the different references, the different references, uh, the, the different wording for in this area. 
So this is really giving you the Greek. It's also giving you the transliterated word to the right. So this is, this is the Greek text. This is how you would say it, soteria, soteria, okay? And then looking at the range of meaning, this is the range of meaning. So I'm looking here, you have saving, preservation, rescue, deliverance. Yeah. And this is, these are, this is the range of meaning here. If I come down here, uh, deliverance or preservation is the first meaning. The second meaning is a way or means of safety. The, the third meaning is a safe return. So actually, uh, the, the, the second meaning... I don't mean LSJ, LSJ. LSJ, yeah, LSJ, yeah. So there's, there's a range of meaning here. So actually, security, safety, so there's different... There's a different range here, okay, um, of meaning. So we could actually pick two. You could do coming over here to the range of meaning. Danny, can you just mute your, your mic? Okay, good, thank you. It's okay, just, just mute it. Okay, so then here the range, we, we can do a word of possibilities here. So then the one could be deliverance. Someone's not muted, who's not muted? Ah, okay. great, perfect, all right. So, so then we, we, we're doing the range of meaning. So we have deliverance. I'm coming back here. Deliverance. And then we could also look at this idea of uh, a means to safety. A means, we could also, this could be another possible, a way or means of safety. That's another possible translation. And then, um, Security, right? So, so there's some, uh, oh, that, keeping safe, keeping safe. So really there's actually two. What I, about rescue? What about rescue? There is a word rescue. Would yeah, you? so if you, just one second, Koya Boboy. So if everyone can see here, there's your Roman numeral number one, and then there's a Roman numeral number two with a range of meaning. So the first is deliverance. The second, so there's really two big word meanings and then like subsets. Does everyone see that? Roman number one is deliverance or preservation. Number two is, is keeping safe, keeping safe, okay? So let's just come back here. Uh, I'm gonna put deliverance. Now actually you asked rescue. Deliverance or rescue, those are synonyms. Those are really synonyms. So you don't wanna put two different if they're synonym, synonyms, they should be together, okay? So there, so, so deliverance or, or security, remaining safe. Let me go back here. Keeping safe. So again, we're just tracking. So keeping safe, all right? Everyone's tracking with me? So then... <clears throat> We're actually going to do word search now, and then we'll do a word choice, and then reasons for uh, So if you're doing the assignment, your assignment can follow this pattern. I'm not requiring the word search, but I'm just if you want to if you want to be precise. So what you're going to have here is you're going to have word possibilities. We just did that. Word possibilities, deliverance, or keeping safe. Uh, word search. So then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to select some word searches here just for the sake of our, of our process. You don't have to do this. You can if you want to. And then I'm going to do a word 
we will do a a word choice and proof. So really this is, if you're working logically, this is the blueprint. Word possibilities, do your word search, and then once you've done a word search, you feel com comfortable with understanding the word, then you make your selection, okay? Everyone's tracking with me? Okay, so let's come back here and let's do this word search now on salvation, okay? So we're gonna search it in the New and the Old Testament, okay? So coming back here, uh, the word is soteria, okay? So I'm going to search that word. So let's go ahead and let's change this to Romans. So Danny, did you see what I did? I X'd it out, and then I'm going to, I just type in R-O-M, and then I come down here, and I'm going to click Romans. So that, that limits my range. I actually, oh, see, I don't, that's a mistake. I don't want Romans 1. I want Romans, the whole passage of Romans. So I'm going to click Romans twice. It should not be Romans 1 here. You're, this is going to limit your search. So if it's Romans 1, it's only looking at Romans 1. It's not looking at Romans 2 through 16, okay? Now I'm going to type in the word that I just looked to the right. I'm going to type in this word, see? So here, soteria. Soteria, right? So I'm going to click this. Now, because I am, I know Greek, and you can do this as well, I'm going to also select, I want to include a Greek text as well. So you, everyone wants to write this down. If you're, if you're doing Greek work, if you're doing Greek work uh, in the New Testament, the Old Testament was LXX and the uh, A, B, and E. This here, S-B-L-G, this is for the Greek work, oops, S-B-L-G, you want S-B-L-G. So now I have the English and I have the Greek side by side, okay? So when I come down here, this is very helpful, okay, um, uh, great. But we only have five results, so wow, that's not so much, right? There's not as many uses here, okay? And looking here, it's talking about being saved, salvation, Romans 10, to be saved, right? 10.10, 10. one believes and is justified, and, confess, uh, and one confesses and is saved, okay? Now, now look at this here, okay? So we have belief and we have justified in this context of then receiving salvation. But again, we still don't have a better understanding. Again, what are we being saved from? There's not enough information here, you know, for me to make a decision, okay? So what I'm going to go here now is I am going to look at related words. Ah, there's soter, there's savior, soter, and there's also Soterion, soterion, saving. So I'm going to include this to see if I can max my word search out. Am I going to get more? Am I going to get a more a larger search? There's nothing really here. So just bear with me, okay? So right now we did a word search. Yeah. So there's nothing. There's nothing, okay? So we did a re, we did a word search here. Uh, word. But we didn't, we weren't really successful. Okay, so watch this. I'm gonna come back here. I just, I don't like the fact that there's no verb because we are saved is a verb. So watch this. I'm going to X this out and then I'm gonna type in save. I'm gonna type in this word save. Save. Oh, wow. Can everyone see that here? To save. That Greek word is sozo, sozo. That's a different word. What? That's a different word. It, it's, it's like a, it's a, like a, a synonym. So I'm going to click on this word sozo. So we're doing a, it's a different word, but it's that same English. So this is where we came back to. <coughs> you can have different Greek words that, meet, that translate the same in English. 
So sometimes you want to do a Greek trend, a, a Greek search. Sometimes you want to be looking at the English to see what the, what's going on here. It's sozo is a synonym of soteria, but just the verb form. Okay, so watch. I'm going to click on that. So I just clicked on sozo, but see here, nothing, right? But it's because it's saying Romans 1. I, that's not helpful. I have to always, you always have to double check that. Go back and click on Romans, the full book. Oh, whoa, what's this? Romans 5, 9. Since therefore we have been justified, that, that's declared righteous by his blood. So that's salvation, right? Much more shall we be saved, saved by him from the wrath of God. <laughs> we hit. We hit the jackpot. <laughs> Verse 10. There's two. Romans 5, 10. For if, we, or for, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. For in this we hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, but for, we, for who hopes for what he sees? And so then we have other examples here. Look, look 10.9, it's almost parallel to 10.13. 10.13 is soteria. 10.9 is sozo. So really, we see that sozo is the same as soteria. It's just a different word. Okay, everyone's tracking with me. You will be saved. Verse 13 said, uh, oh, there it is. So, so, ver Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sozo. So it's almost the exact same as this, uh, that other reference to soteria. Okay? But the, goal, the, the jackpot is here. The jackpot is here. So cigarado, and Dibab, before we also looked at the context of, of wrath of God in 2 and 3, we just read and it was there as well. Okay? So Coming back here, though, unequivocally, uh, we did a sozo, eight results. So now we have 13 references. Sozo is a synonym to soteria. And again, you don't know Greek. You're just looking at those comparisons, okay? So watch this. We need more proofs, but Sigurado So everyone's tracking. Everyone sees that, okay? So clearly here, we have to choose this. It's not just, now you could say keeping safe. Okay, fair enough. But really it's deliverance. It's, it's deliverance from the wrath of God. So the word choice is deliverance. Okay. And then you're going to need to create, a, create some proof text. Some, um, some proofs, some proofs. Is everyone tracking with me there? Everyone's tracking with me? Any questions or comments? Making sense, right? Okay, we're not going to end there. We're going to keep this study. We're going to keep this study alive. We're going to keep it going here, okay? So we've just done sozo and soteria in the New Testament, okay? We could also do sozo and soteria in... In Paul's, in Paul's letters and the New Testament as well, okay? All right? But I want to go to the Old Testament. Let's, let's do some work in the Old Testament, okay? Let's do some work because, again, remember the, the, Paul is proclaiming the gospel of God, which was promised beforehand in the prophetic writings, okay? So I'm going to X this out. I'm going to X this out as well because I'm looking at the Old Testament, so I'll just leave ESV in here. And then I'm going to type in save. Now look here. This says sozo. Find this New Testament word. We don't want to work for new, we don't want to look for a New Testament word. What we want to do is we want to look for an Old Testament word. 
yasha, to save. There's two words here. You can search each one. So let's just do the first one, to save, to save. So now we're looking up Old Testament. 200 hits. Wow. Wow. Big. So yasha, yasha. Let's write this down here. So now, coming back up to here, we noticed, we noticed two things. We noticed that gospel was referenced in Psalm, Diba Psalm 49 to 10, and also in Isaiah. Diba, we noticed this, okay? So when I'm looking for salvation, that could be a clue for me to, to be looking for a parallel, to see if they're similar, to see what significance we have. Okay, so let me just come down here, okay? So Deuteronomy, oh, so this is interesting. You shall be saved from your... Saved from your enemies, delivered from your enemies. Not numbers, right? Uh, Exodus uh, fourteen thirty. The Lord saved Israel, so the Lord delivered Israel. So, so this is interesting. So, this is clearly a deliverance idea. But let's go down. We don't have a lot of time. Let's go down. Let's look at let's look at Psalms and Isaiah. Let's look at Psalms and Isaiah. A lot of usages here. Let's go to Psalms and Isaiah. So looking here in the Psalms, this is all over the place. This idea of saved. I am saved from my enemies. Save a humble people. None to save. The Lord saves his anointed. A lot of references here to save, okay? Just looking along here. Ah, Psalms... 36 6 your righteousness we see righteousness in 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 romans 1 16 and 17 your righteousness is like the mountains of god your judgments are the great deep man and beast you save <laughs> interesting okay um and so there's just a lot of references to, to salvation and you would just want to look through here to see if there's parallel passages let's go on to see if we see so there's a lot of references to salvation in psalms so if i was exploring this idea of salvation and the foundation is in the old testament i would want to look i would want to look at the psalms okay let's go on to isaiah let's go on to isaiah wow so isaiah 43 now watch this i can limit my search to isaiah 40 to 66. So we don't, ha I just want to see how much is it used here. So you see how now I'm removing all my other word searches and I'm just focusing on Isaiah 40 to 66. There's a lot of, look at this, turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth for I am God. There is no other. It's <laughs> like the gospel. I am a righteous God, a savior. There is none beside me. There is a lot of references to this idea of salvation in, I, in Isaiah 40 to 66. Okay? So I really think Isaiah 40 to 66 is a parallel context, is a foundational context, not parallel, foundational for what Paul is, for Paul's message. Now watch this. Look at these, look at these related words. I haven't even looked at this yet. Look at these related words. <laughs> Isaiah is a related word to say. Does everyone see that here? Isaiah. If we search that, there's. It's, I think Isaiah means Yahweh. Related words. Huh? How did you go to the related words? Okay, so when you do the word search, whenever you do a word search, if you look at the top here, the top left, the related words will be there. 
That's the first place. Top left, they will be there. If you come down to here on the bottom right, now this is using, let me just, uh, so, so there's two places for related words, Danny. Top left, you can click and it drops down in your word search. But if you haven't done a word search and you type on savior, the word is yesha here. The, the related words are also below the meaning here on the right. Does everyone see that? Okay. So there's, there's two places. Okay. So it's, it's in the word search. It's in the word search, but it's also, so it's in the word search here and also to the right here. Now look down here. Uh, Yosh, Yoshaya, Yoshaya, Yoshua, Isaiah, Isaiah, Ishi, Mesha, Shua. So let's start, let's start, I'm going to click on some of these parallel words here. Let's just see what pops. Let's see what pops, okay? And I'm going to X out of here, okay? So let's see what happens here. Ah, Joshua. <laughs> so this word is related to Joshua. We know that because Joshua literally means Yahweh saves. And that's also the name, ironically, not ironically, providentially, uh, of, of, G, of Jesus. Look here. We have the whole context dealing with God raising up judges to save Israel. So this physical salvation of Israel maybe is a type to a, this eternal this eternal salvation that's going to come in Jesus Christ. Um, so that's really big here. This is really big. Let's just go. Let's go to, back to. Let's go back to Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms. Notice there's 221 results as well. There's a lot more results. Let's go to Psalms. So there's so now you see in the Psalms, brothers and sisters, that not only is the saved word being used, but now the salvation word is being used. Now the salvation word is being used. And you'd want to look at some of these to see if there's a parallel. Okay. But you just again, there's so much information here because remember what Paul is saying. His gospel has been promised in the prophetic writings, in the prophets, in the Old Testament. Okay? So our primary should be, our primary should be in the prophets, but Paul often quotes Psalms as well, and David spoke prophetically. So we talked about before that, that David's writing should also be included. Let's go back now to Isaiah. There's so many references here again. Isaiah 30, uh, 43, Isaiah 45. Look at all these references here. Righteous God, a, a, a Savior, turn and be saved all the ends of the earth. We mentioned that before. So again, what I want us to be thinking about is that when you're stuck, when you're preaching something and you're stuck with a word, doing a word search really just opens the, the floodgates to more information to consider. Now, you do have to be careful. You have to be, you have to be wise. Um, and there's, there's steps. But I hope that you really see that, you know, the best commentary on Scripture is Scripture. 
So many times when we're trying to find, to understand a context, uh, using these word search is so powerful. This is like a concordance. This is the next, this is the, this is the upgrade to a concordance, okay? Any questions or comments? Is everyone tracking? Is everyone tracking with me? Uh, Tim. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think this is a very uh, good tool. Uh, I, I'm so glad that uh, someone has came up with this kind of uh, application. And it's just, I think, a matter of uh, practice, uh, getting familiar on how to browse on this uh, uh, software. For now, I'm overwhelmed. I am. I'm lost. I cannot uh, keep track uh, of what you're doing, but at least uh, I have a general idea that uh, this is a good uh, uh, tool. But I, I don't know if others will share with me. Na, I, we, I'm, it's an avalanche of uh, information. Yeah. So. Okay, so I, I hope at least at least you're you're really uh, maybe following a little bit with how we're doing these things. There's there's a there's a big learning curve, but I hope that you're seeing the power here. So coming back here, uh, we did a word search of Yasha. Any questions or, or other comments? Is, I know maybe this is, this is overwhelming for you, but are you at least in some ways maybe tracking a little bit with what we're doing, at least maybe if you can't type the specific, you're at least understanding how we're using the, 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 uh, the program. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do, let's do another word search. Actually, it's, let's take a break. It's already 7.53. Let's take, let's take another uh, seven to 10 minute break if you need to go to the bathroom. And let's go ahead and let's, let's just take one more break. And um, you can ask questions if you want as well. Yeah, I did, I did some practice uh, team last Saturday because there was no research. So I, I make use of the time for one hour. I was able to look for four words, very important words for me. So I am, I am now quite familiar with only with the looking of the words. Good. But the... Uh, how to how to do it simultaneously with Hebrew or Greek? That's that's uh, my difficulty. I don't know uh, the technique. I have to learn that kind of technique. One, I saw when uh, I saw you with uh, like a two like a two screen. Yeah. One uh, screen is different contents of the other. I have to learn how to use that. I am trying to locate that. I cannot still do it. Maybe but here, let, let me share my screen. Let's let's practice right now while we're on the break. Let's let's practice here. Let, let me share my screen. Yeah. Okay, so let's just do a new screen here. So the way the way that looking here, I'm gonna click. So 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 Kuya, Kuya oh boy, click on the on the toggle. So with your mouse, click. And then you're gonna have a drop down. It says pick a Bible or commentary. Does, do you see that? So I'm clicking here and it has a, a pick a Bible or commentary. So I'm gonna click on that. So now it gives me this toggle. It can do commentaries here. These are commentaries. These are Bibles. So these are commentaries, these are Bibles. See the, the toggle back and forth? So then in the Bibles, over on the right, you can do English, you can do ancient, or you can do all. So English on the right. I click all. Yeah, you can do all, yeah, okay. Now, for, for, for looking at Greek and the New Testament, so you're looking at Greek New Testament, the, what I recommend is the ESV like we have, and then also the, let me find it here. This one here, S, this is the SB, I would write this name down, SBLG, the Greek New Testament 
upgraded by Tyndale House. This is the one. Got it. And then you're going to come down here, all the way down to the bottom. OK. So I clicked OK. So now I have two versions. So now, so now you're looking at two versions. So then now I can go Romans. Let's go Romans 1. So I click Romans 1. And so now you see they're, run, they're, they're now running parallel. Were you able to do that? Yeah. OK, great. So, so now you have the Greek. Yeah, Greek and English at the same time. OK. Now, now, now if, you, if you want to really look closely, what you can do here is look at the, the, the gear. Do you see the gear option there? Do you see the gear? OK, yeah. I click on the gear. Right okay. now, it's interleaved. Interleaved. Yeah, okay. So you can read each independently. But if you want to really see the connection between the two, you're going to change this to interlinear. Okay. Interlinear. Okay. So then now, if you look, it's literally, you can see which word is which of Christ. Okay. Jesus. Okay. God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Apostolos, apostles. So now this is hard to read English, but you're seeing the relationships. Okay. So if you want to, okay. yeah. So so if you're just if you're just quickly looking, I, I like to do the interleaved. Okay. 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 Interleaved. Back interleaved. Okay. Yeah. The other option is you can do a column. You can do a column. So there's ah, a column, column view. Okay. Side by side like that. Yeah. Ah. Okay. That's the one. Okay. I got it. Biggie. Now watch this. You, you, got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. What? This is really. This is going to be really nice. You're going to like this. Watch this. I'm going to X this out. So watch this. I'm going to do Genesis one. Watch this. You're going to love this. So Genesis one. Okay. I'll X this out. I'm going to pick a Bible. So I'm going to go to ancient. I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick LXX. I'm going to pick the Hebrew. And then I'm going to pick a translation for the LXX. So I have an English from Hebrew. I have the LXS, LXX, and then I'm also going to get a translation. So where's my translation here? Hold on. So if you're looking at a Greek translation into use this the A B E N. So the so I would write this down A B E N. If you're looking at the Greek to English translation. So it's a translation from the Greek not from the Hebrew, okay? So watch. A B E N. So now we have, we have several translations. So I'm going to re I'm going to rearrange these so that they fit side by side. Okay. Then I'm going to go into, I'm going to go into a column view. So look at this, look at this, look at this. Look what we have here. You can, you, you have here, you have here Hebrew, and then the English translation. Then you have the Greek, and then you have the English translation. So this is really, Ios, this is so nice. This is so this is so yeah. powerful. So powerful. So then look here. So then watch this. 
Koya Volboy. So coming down yeah. here, coming down here, we can go to uh, Genesis 3, 126. So then uh, God said, let us make man. So there's that Esha, uh, Ashe, that, that Henry had mentioned last time in the, in the Bible's big story. Uh, this is, let me just apply this here. So then you have the, the do, let us make man. You have the do, right? And then in, in the Greek as well, it's do. But then coming down here, like you were saying, it's bara. It's a different, it's the different word that you were looking at. Um, but, but, in, but in the Greek, it's the same. So see here, so here you have the Hebrew asa, asa, which is, um, uh, which is do, right? Make, make and make. But then here created bara, it's different. So this is different here, but here it's the same. See how it's made and make same. So all that I was trying to say last week was that if there was significance, they could have used a different Greek word, but they used the same Greek word. So perhaps they were thinking bara and make is it's the same equivalent. They're, they're, again, that, that's not, it's not inspired, but it's, I'm just looking at how the, the Hebrew scholars, when they translated the Septuagint, I, I'm looking at how they translated the Hebrew to Greek. That gives me an insight whether they thought it was significant or not. And they use the same words. Are you tracking with, with what I'm saying? Yeah. Pastor Tim, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Are, are you going to teach us Hebrew and Greek this, this year? <laughs> we'll see. There is a plan. I want to offer Hebrew and Greek to those who want to learn it. And that will become a, an optional in our curriculum. So I don't know when we'll be teaching it, but perhaps next year, maybe we'll start Greek the second semester. First semester, we're doing biblical theology. Um, maybe the second semester in the fall, we will, we will offer Greek, Greek one. I, I have a- Thank you. Yeah, I have a baby coming in with the COVID and we just don't know the COVID right now. I'm just going to teach one, one class in the spring. Um, and then I think we have one other teacher who will be teaching the other class. But um, yeah, uh, there is a plan to teach Hebrew and Greek. I need to get, I need to get my, my Hebrew back up to par. I, I, I'm a little bit lax right now in my Hebrew. So, but we have the tools. We have the tools. There's... There is no excuse. We have the tools to be able to teach it without a, a large expense. You don't have to buy books. We'll, we'll be able to do it. So, okay, let's get back into the text. What time is it? Yeah, it's already 8.07. Let's go ahead and begin. Let me um, check to see who else is here. Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, so uh, the next, let's go back to our, let's go back to our text. So then the next word we're going to actually work at now is we're going to look at, now these proofs, so I, I will share, I will post my example handout on how to write a proof. Okay, so you're, this is, this is, uh, uh, this is the choice. And then these are proofs. Okay. I, I'll give you an example on how to write out the, the proofs. The, the big thing right now is I want you to be practicing with uh, Step Bible. Okay, let's look, first at, let's look first at righteousness of God before we go to the last. So let's go to uh, uh, Word Possibilities. Now, again, we determined that the righteous, righteousness of God was more debated. And um, again, I'm just looking at the word righteous, righteousness, and we could expand our search um, to righteousness of God. But 
um, uh, we're just doing the basic word meaning search, okay? So looking here at righteousness, righteousness, if I can just bring this up here so that everyone can see. So righteousness, I just clicked on the word. Righteousness, uh, the meaning is that which is uh, right. This is the act of doing what is in agreement with God's standard. Looking here, the range righteous and justice. And then here, business of a judge, justice, Yeah, so it, there's it's a slight nuance. So we can we could we could do here range of possibilities righteousness, which is the definition here is what I'm going to, to, to type in could be the act of doing what is in agreement with God's standard. I think this is really including this. I think that this is really including this, um, this righteousness of God idea. Really, this is, this could be the act of doing what is in agreement with God's, God's law. So God's standard or law to be specific, okay? So righteousness, all right? And the other idea is that of justice, business of judge. So I'm really thinking that this is going to be our choice. I'm just, I'm just thinking that that's the case. I'm considering that. Okay, so coming back here again. So we're gonna do some word searches now. So. What I'm going to do is let me just bring it back up here. So let me see here. Um, I'm just bringing my notes up, that's why. Okay, so I'm gonna give you another way to search, okay? So looking here, I'm going to type in righteous. And you can see here this word righteousness to Kayasune. So I can click on that and I'm just going to change this to uh, Romans like we've done before. And in doing this word search, we see almost an identical, we see, uh, we see a very similar reference here. Righteousness of God. We see the same key phrase again here, righteousness of God. We see the same key phrase again, righteousness of God. God's righteousness. So I think this is the biggest cluster of righteousness of God anywhere ever. So you have one, two, three. In, in chapter three, you have one, two, three, four references to righteousness of God. So doing a word search, we can immediately, uh, righteousness in, in, Romans reveals 29 results. Does everyone see that? So let's just come back here. Dekai o sune. Dekai o sune. So we, we, we searched this in Romans. And we had 29 times. So coming back here, Manga Kapitan, coming back here, here in, in Romans, we got eight hits, right? Five times here. Here we got nine times. But look at righteousness, 29 times. That is significant. That is significant. 
And coming back here, we have a cluster in Romans 3 that climaxes at the end of Romans 3. So Romans 3, 5, 5, 21, 22, 25, 26. So what we could also say is, So that's quite significant. Is everyone tracking with me? That, that's very significant, okay? Um, that's very significant. Okay, now let's, let's do some more word searches here. So I'm gonna come back up here. I'm gonna come back up here and do related words here. So I'm going to include rightly, look at this, condemn, Condemn is, is related to dekaiosune because it's the opposite. Does that, it's, a, it's a polar opposite. So it's right because it's, it's, it's uh, to justify is the positive, to condemn is the negative, okay? So just, just, so just searching all of these words, including all of these words here. I'm just looking, this is, what I'm trying to show us is that this is a courtroom setting, diba? Righteousness, you have a judge, uh, you either are condemned or you're innocent. Look at this, justification, justice, just, crime. It's all this law courtroom setting. I hope everyone's tracking with me. So I'm just gonna, let's just search to see what pops. Let's just see what pops here. So look at this. If I look at the word, if I'm looking at the, 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 the parallels, the, the related words, 56 results. So let's just look down here. The righteous, righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. Uh, the wrath of God is revealed from, from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. God's righteous decree, Romans 1.32, uh, 2.8, those who are self-seeking, they do not obey the truth and they do not obey, unright they obey unrighteousness. It is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who are justified. The precepts of the law, justified by your words. Our righteousness serves to show the righteousness of God. Is God unrighteous to inflict wrath upon us? As it is written, there is none righteous whatsoever. So what I'm trying to see here is the primary image of the gospel, the primary image of salvation is in a law, a courtroom setting. Okay, it's a courtroom setting. Is everyone tracking with what, what I'm referring to here? Is, is everyone tracking with me? So, so when we're speaking about the gospel, when we're teaching about the gospel, we have to be explaining it in this, it's this courtroom imagery where we come before the, the eternal judge of the universe and he, he's assessing us in relationship to his law, okay? And so there's a lot, of, a lot of contemporary theologians that don't want to talk. They say that it's not a courtroom, it's not a judgment, that's, that's, that's pre-scientific, that's in, a, in, a, in an ancient world context. We should not be accepting it. I was just debating someone on a on a Facebook group over this, okay? But this is all over. This is all over uh, Romans. 56 times in Romans. That's crazy. It's crazy when you're looking at salvation, when you're looking up gospel, how it's nine, 10 times righteousness. 56 times, it's big, okay? So, There's plenty of information to further define. And in most of these cases, if not all of the cases, it's dealing with, it's dealing with this idea here. This is really, uh, this should be our choice. Okay. Now we still have to work through this idea. This is deficient because we're looking at, we're looking at this idea. 
So in some ways, this is a deficient argument because the, the, the word choice was just righteousness, okay? So we are a little deficient there, okay? Now, let's come back here. Let's go ahead and let's search. Let's search this word. What you can do is, I want to just search this English, all words related to this word right. So I'm going to type in right, and I'm going to do an asterisk, a, an asterisk, like a star. The times number that's above the eight, okay? Everyone, everyone sees that it's above the eight. If you look over to the right, it's right with a star. What that's going to signify is it's going to choose every word that begins with right. Righteous, righteousness, um, right, all, all of it. So let's go ahead and let's search this, okay? So actually, it's slightly less than the other word search, okay? But let's, let's expand this to all of uh, the New Testament. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to – I'm going to limit my search to the New Testament. All right, so the next thing I want to do is let's go ahead – and let's search righteousness. Let's search righteousness now in the Old Testament. So we have this word. Uh, there's two words here. Let's just choose this Zedek, righteous. Um, so let's look at this word righteous in the Old Testament context and specifically in the Psalms, um, in the Psalms and also in, in um the prophets, but I'm going to be using, I want to change this again. I want to change this to the LXX because we're, we're looking at the Greek word, not the Hebrew word. Okay, so let's do the LXX. And then we also need a translation here. So I'm going to X this out. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. My mistake. I was looking at the, I was looking at the Hebrew. I'm sorry. Let's look first at the Hebrew before we do the Greek. That, that's my, that's my mistake. Sorry, my fault. Yeah. So ESV. Okay. We want to do this. All right. So, so let's, let's look at the ESV. And there's 111 results in the Old Testament. Everyone can see that there. Now watch this, watch this. I'm gonna come here. Um, he judges the world in righteousness, Psalm, well, let's just begin up here. So Psalm four, my God of my righteousness, offer right sacrifices, trust in the Lord, according to my righteousness. So again, it's giving all the references to, to righteousness in the Old Testament, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I want to go back up here. I want to include related words. So there's a related word here. There's a feminine form. So I'm just going to include both of those. So then let me go back now. Let me go back down to, to the Psalms, okay? Maybe I went too fast. Let me just – what I did was I added – there's a there's two words for righteousness. They're almost the same. One is masculine. One is feminine. So I just clicked both of them so I got the full range. Okay, so sometimes you'll see two words and you want to click on both of them because you don't want to miss your search, okay? So coming down here, coming down here to, to the Psalms because we saw the cluster. Again, we're looking at the other clusters. So look, looking here, we have all this reference to, to righteousness, both of the Lord and also for us. Now watch this. Look at Psalm 24, 5. So I had spent time before studying. He, uh, let's look at Psalm 24, 5, because it says, He will receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. <laughs> so we have salvation, we have righteousness, and it seems to be saying that he's going to receive righteousness, okay? So let's, let's expand 
this is just from reading these usages, okay? So let me expand, let me expand this, okay? So this is the context of Psalm 24, the King of Glory. Let's look at this here. The earth is full of the Lord's, uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. He founded it upon the seas and established it in the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, who does not swear deceitfully. So this is someone who is, who is fixed upon, he has this clean heart, right? So this, is, this, this implies salvation. This implies the work of the spirit. This implies the work of a new heart, the circumcised heart. He will receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. If ever there was a reference to the imputation of God's righteousness, <laughs> meaning that God is giving us righteousness so that we can stand in his court. This would be it. <laughs> he will receive a blessing from the Lord. What kind of blessing? Uh, oh, man, we, we, did, we did another class in Hebrew poetry. For those who uh, we will save this for parallelism. So righteousness from God is further clarifying the kind of blessing that he is receiving from the Lord. The kind of blessing he is receiving from the Lord is Righteousness. God is giving him righteousness. The God of his salvation is giving him righteousness so that he can stand. <laughs> uh, who, can, who shall stand? Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And really, I like mountain better. I like the translation mountain better. Who will, us, who will stand on the mountain of God? Who will, who, will st who will ascend? Who will stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. The work of the Spirit. Uh, he, will, he will receive a blessing, righteousness from the God of his salvation. So Paul felt confident in proclaiming the gospel from the Old Testament. And here would be an example of, of this, union with, this union with Christ, this, this gift of righteousness. So again, there's so many references. You, can, you could not use all of them if you were to preach. But this would be the type of study that you'd want to do. Just reading through these passages, something catches your eye, then something catches your eye, then you can go and explore it. Okay, that, that's kind of the thinking here. Um, uh, just moving on down here. Uh, <laughs> look at this, look at this. So we talked about the context of Psalm 40, right? Psalm 40. So let's go to Psalm 40, 9 and 10. Watch this. I have told you the glad news of deliverance. This is salvation. In the great congregation, in the church. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your salvation. I have not hidden your salvation. I have not hidden your salvation. Uh, uh, I have not hidden your deliverance. But look at this. Does everyone see this? The word is righteousness. The word is righteousness. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. So look here, Manga Kapitid. We talked about this before. Here the word translated as deliverance, but literally it's it's the word righteousness. Look, look, at, look, at, look at the word below. It's righteousness. They translated deliverance, but this is referring to the sense in which God is righteous. God is faithful to his covenant, to the salvation that he promises us. So here you have a perfect example. Righteousness, deliverance is parallel with faithfulness and salvation. Does everyone see that? Is everyone tracking? Let's take a pause and ask a question. Do you see that? When I, when I hover over deliverance, it is in fact the word righteousness. The Hebrew word righteousness. How is it pronounced, Tim? Sedaka? Sedaka? Sedaka. 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 Yeah. Hebrew typically is going quick to the end. It's 
So again, we're, we're, you're not a Hebrew scholar, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but we're at least making these connections and Step Bible is offering that connection. If we did not have Step Bible, we would, we would not see the connection of righteousness with faithfulness, salvation, and the gospel. <laughs> it's all there. It's all there. It's all there. Let, let's continue on and we'll, we'll be done soon because it's getting late. It's, it's, it's getting late here. Let's, let's move on here. Look here. Look here. Okay. Look at this passage here. So we also, the ball, one of our questions was, uh, why is Paul not ashamed? Right? Why is Paul not, not ashamed? Psalm 71:24. And my tongue will talk of your righteous help all the day long, for they have been put to shame and disappointed who sought my hurt. So it's in the righteous help of Yahweh that, in fact, the enemy is ashamed and not, not the person. So Paul is not ashamed because he has the righteous hand of God with him. Look at this. Uh, may, uh, let's go down here. Hold on. Psalm 96, Behold the Lord before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. The, the climax of Romans 1 to 3 is culminating in Romans 3.19. All are held accountable before, all are guilty before the, God in God's courtroom. Again, this is, this is the big context of Romans. This this, this final judgment on the last day. And so we see this. And Paul is just explaining it. He's just explaining it in his gospel. This is not new. Paul's declaration in Romans, this is not new doctrine. He's just revealing what's in the Old Testament. Come on, can I get a, a witness here? That's what he's doing. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. This is the Romans context. Um, continuing on here, let's just, uh, let's go, let's go on to, let's go on to, um, let's go on now to Isaiah. So now there's, okay, there's no references in Isaiah. Okay. All right. So now we looked at, uh, we, we, there's no references in Isaiah, but there will be. Okay, so let's let's do a word search now in, in the in the Greek, the Greek translation. Um, the Greek translation. So let's do let's change this now to the Greek. Let's change this now to the Greek. So again, I'm using LXX. And the A B E N, I'm going to X out, and then I'm going to type in righteousness. So look here, I can type in dikaiosune, or I can type in righteousness, and it's still going to give me the word. Okay? Does everyone see that? It's still I typed in righteousness, or you could type in dikaiosune. It's still going to give you. You want to make sure that you're clicking on the Greek word. Okay? So now I'm going to search. Now I'm going to search. I have 346 results. <laughs> it's big. That's big. Let me see something here. Let's look this up here. Let's look down here. So, so <laughs> before we looked in, before we looked in the Hebrew. Look now at the Greek. 
I will announce good news right of your righteousness. <laughs> So it's even more, it's stronger than in the Hebrew. It's stronger than in the Hebrew. I will proclaim good news, your righteousness in the church. We mentioned that before. We mentioned that before. Let's go here. I'm looking now for this being ashamed. Looking at this being ashamed. So I'm looking for the connection of righteousness, good news, and possibly this idea of shame whether being given confidence or not being ashamed. I'm just looking for that really quick here. Okay, we're going to go now to Isaiah. Let's see if we have let's see if we have any references in Isaiah. So there's a lot in Proverbs of righteousness which we would expect. So let's go now to Isaiah 40. Begin again we we've, we've identified Isaiah 40 to 66 as one having a lot of references. So let's look closely in Isaiah. Let's look closely in Isaiah. Verse uh, uh, 42, verse 6. I, the Lord, called you in righteousness. I will hold you by your hand. I will strengthen you. I gave you, I gave you for a covenant of, ra of a race for light to the nations. You have this sprinkling of, right, uh, sprinkling of righteousness in Isaiah 45, 8. Verse 46, 13. I brought near my righteousness. The deliverance of the one with me. I have appointed Zion in Zion deliverance to Israel for glory. Let's look here. Let's look at this Isaiah 51 5. Uh, context. Okay, I can't find the passage, but you, I guess what I'm trying, to, I'm trying to show here is that there's a lot of references to righteousness in connection with salvation, the salvation of the Lord, okay? And you're seeing that in, in the, where, I guess the big takeaway was using the Hebrew, there wasn't as many references in Isaiah. When we're looking at the Greek, there's a lot of, righteousness references in the Greek text. And probably because the Hebrew has a synonymous word, but it's not the word uh, Zedek or Zedekah, okay? So that's why we need to be, we need to look at in the Hebrew then also in the Greek. And again, this is advanced. So you, you don't have to do this. I'm just giving you options. Um, is, is everyone tracking with me? Do you have a question? Maybe this is a lot for you. We, we, this is the second week now. Does at least everyone kind of see how Step Bible is operating, the, the, the way in which it works? Well, let's just take a moment to, to ask questions or, or have to make a comment. Okay, so really the bottom line is the only way that you're going to get good at this is to practice, okay? That's really the only way. Now, some of you don't have as good access to, 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 the, to a computer, so... What my, my what I want to do is I want you I'll 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 share the assignments I'll share the assignment this next assignment it'll be due in two weeks so next week that's due is the work is the observations and the questions and then assignment number eight I believe um, number seven or number eight I have to check but which will be due in two weeks is this word study and so I'll post that as soon as possible and it'll just have you know um you need to practice the, the the word searches and then you're gonna look at the range of meaning and then you're just gonna pick a meaning and then just have several proofs okay so really th the goal of this assignment is to be practicing doing these word searches and then just to be looking at how the word is being used in different contexts and then making decisions okay I, i'm not expecting these amazing proofs i just Really, it, this is just something that when we prepare our, whatever it is, when you see a word that doesn't really make sense, I just want you to, to start using Step Bible, whether at a mobile app or in, in your computer, just, just to help get a, a, a looking at the lexicon. What you're really, the, the goal is to be 
looking at the, lexic the, the lexicon meaning and then looking at different ways it's used in the scripture to help you define the word, okay? Any questions or comments? Is that making sense? So, Tim, yeah. uh, going back, yeah. so it will be our, our word. Word study. Our choice verse. It'll be the passage that you're working in right now. You will use the passage you're working in. Pick several words that you want to further define the meaning and then explore them further, just, just like we're doing, just exactly like what we're doing, yeah. And, and you set a limit or a minimum number of words? I'm just gonna require four. If you wanna do more, you can, but I just want you to practice. I, again, I want you to practice looking up the range of meaning, doing word searches, becoming familiar with the different usages, you know, Romans, the words are so big in Romans and there's so many references, but you might only get five or 10 for your word. So it will be a lot less, it'll be a lot more manageable. I, I mean, righteousness is just all over the scripture. So there's a lot of information that might be very intimidating for you, but most of the words will have less usage. So I, I don't want anyone to be stressed. I just want you to start practicing Again, let me just go back to, 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 to the main points. Number one, looking at the cross references, using the cross references. Number two, looking up the meanings, the meaning, okay? And number three, looking up, looking up how it's used throughout the scripture, beginning in the immediate context, um, co coming back to this, this picture here, coming back to this picture here. Um, I want you to look at how how your word is being used in the immediate context, in the context of the book, in the context of the author's works, in the context of genre, in the context of in a write, writing similar period, and then in the canonical context. Can, canonical context is just Old and New Testament. So again, the, the whole desire is for us to become de defining the word and then looking how it's used, okay? And this really just gets us into the this just gets us into the text. And before you'd have to have a concordance, you'd have to have a lexicon, you'd have to have a dictionary, and and, and it's just you're going one by one. It's so much work. You, you could take one hour doing one one search. Now it's like it's like that. And Sayam Talaga, if we're not using this as a tool to help in our preparation. And and you know, when you're preparing, it's not that you're going to have all these different proofs, but that you should, you should, I don't know this word, boom, boom, boom. I'm just, I just do a quick word search. Okay, I, I, I'm much more familiar on how the Bible uses its word, what, what it means. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Is everyone tracking? Everyone's tracking with me there? So, so next week, We'll move on to the next, but again, the assignments are kind of, kind of, they're going to be behind. I'll start assigning them so that you have several weeks to turn them in. But next week, what's due is just, is just your, your, your observations and questions. I think one person already handed theirs in already. So just follow the pattern that I, I, I sent out. And um, beginning in October, if you hand, if you submit your assignments in late, I will start to take off just. Not a lot, but just just one or two points, depending on how long it's late, just because it needs to be fair with everyone else. Some people are really on time and they're doing a great job, and I understand that people are late. If you have a legitimate reason, like there is an emergency and you couldn't, fair enough, but um, you know, for the most part, if it's late, it'll just it'll just have one or two points, not not a lot taken off. Any other questions or comments? It's already 8.47, so I want to let you go early. I, I rarely do that, so I want to let you go early. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, Tim, on the assignment, it's the observation and question on what verse? For your, for your passage. Remember, every, every assignment is, is going to be applied to your passage. Every assignment is applied to your passage, okay? And remember, so as, as I assign the assignment, you're, you're working on your passage. You're going to turn it in as an individual, and then you're going to 
you, this is the one time you can copy and paste. You're going to put it in the one large document that you're going to resubmit at the end of the semester. But my comments, I'm expecting my comments or recommendations that you consider or implement some of those recommendations because your final project, if you don't implement the recommendations, maybe I'll take a couple points off because I'm trying to give you recommendations so that you can improve and then when you resubmit, there'll be more improved the second, the second draft, okay? Everyone's tracking with me? Okay, great. I know this is probably just so much information and it's so stressful for you. I, I totally understand. Um, but but I, did, I did feel this is very important. If we just don't work, if we don't work, then it's, we're never gonna be good on it. We, good, we're never going to be good with the program. So I've, I've shown you examples. This is the thing. When you practice, you can go back and you have a video. There's a live video that I'll save on, it's saved on Facebook. I'm gonna save this on Facebook. And then once I get this other video edited, we'll just switch it out, okay? There's also videos of Step Bible on how to do it. He does a good job on YouTube. So I really recommend each video is like 10 minutes take time to watch them. I watched them today. Um, again, I watched them several times each. This, this program is going to take work. It's just like any other program. AutoCAD. AutoCAD takes so much work, right? Kuya, Kuya, Kuya Henry, Kuya Danny. AutoCAD is just so Mahira, right? It's just so big. It's the same here. It's really the same here. Okay, let's close in prayer. And um, uh, Clinton, are you there? Clinton. Yes, Pastor Tim. Yes, yes, Pastor. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, good evening. We thank you, God, for this wonderful time. And we thank you, God, for um, allowing using Pastor Tim uh, for us to learn new, new techniques, I say, uh, to learn more about your message your gospel and we are uh, we pray that uh, you will continue to bless him more and empower him for us to learn more from you thank you god for everything bless us guide us and protect us in jesus name we pray amen